We have to start talking about Dance Moms first, right? When you were developing the show, I didn't develop the show. Well, when it was coming to you, the tough love persona, I'm a dance teacher, I get it. Was that something that you wanted to play into a little bit or is that completely you through and through? That's completely me. However, I wasn't on the show at the beginning. Oh, they yes. shot two episodes. You know, the network was using my studio for free and I had nothing to do with it. I was an on-camera choreographer. So in case, if they caught me on camera, I wouldn't see them. And uh, yeah, then after the third episode that they shot, when the sinister minister came in screaming at me and I called the police, so on the drama and so forth. Unfolded. Yes, and when that footage got back to the network, that's when they said, who is this woman? How come we don't know who she is? They're like, well, it's her studio you're using, yeah. come on. So that's what happened. We know from reality TV, though, I mean, 99% of what's filmed doesn't make the final cut. Do you, do you think there's an awful lot more that could have gone into it that would justify it? So or were you happy with, with, with what oh, went out? I was absolutely not happy with what out. You know, I mean, when you tell a child the first time, you're nice. When you tell them the third time, you're still OK. When you tell them the 30th time, it gets angry. You're and they use the 30th time <laughs> all the time. And they use the 30th time, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you, like, of course, over your years, there's been some massive stars that have kind of come through your training process. You're talking uh, Maddie Ziegler, Jojo Siwa. Is talent that something you can spot? Because you just said that you say it once, you say it 30 times. Is talent something that you can spot on the first or second time? Or does it take the 30, 30 times for you to see a star? No, like no, Jojo no. Siwa? I can spot talent. I'm here teaching, touring all over Ireland. I can see a kid, one child, in the back of a room of 500 kids. Wow. That's talented. I can see the feet or the legs. Maybe they don't have the passion. Maybe they don't have the brain, but they might have the facility. And yeah. that's what I can spot. Show business is such a tough business. Historically, it always has been going back to theater and hundreds of years ago. And even now it's more so with social media and TikTok. Do you think, to live in that sort of environment, to grow up and to perform and for that to be your job, you need to have a hard exterior. Is it necessary for that kind of tough love approach and that, that kind of sharp approach? Yes, uh, you must have a thick skin. You know, anyone in any type of arts, whether you're a singer, dancer, sculptor, painter, you put your heart out there on a plate and somebody is gonna come along with a fork and stab it. It doesn't matter who, what, when, where. So you have to love what you do more than anything in the world. And you have to just enjoy it and know that it's your vocation in life. And it doesn't matter what anybody says. Or just like me, it doesn't matter what they say about me and my teaching methods, I get results. I make stars. I've seen it firsthand. I watched you perform, uh, which is a festival that I worked on before. Yes. And I've seen you get those results. So it's obviously still very much your passion to do what you do. Now your studio, you, you, the, the studio in Pittsburgh, that, that, that's gone now. Was it tough to kind of say goodbye to that? Oh my or were goodness. Were you ready for the new challenge? Oh my life? goodness. I tried to give it to some former students. I tried to sell it to other dance teachers in the area that were renting their schools. Uh, I, I tried everything. I tried everything. I did not want to let it go. No. But our taxes in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania are astronomical. Really? It's insane, the school taxes. We have great public education and we all pay for it. So it was just killing me. And it, you know, it's a business and it was my name on the building. If I'm not there to run it and I'm not there to teach every day, it's not going to be what it could be. And I had an amazing faculty there, amazing teachers, but do you enjoy the side of things of getting to leave America and teach all around the world? Because that's what you're doing at the minute. Yes, I love to travel. It's proven to be very difficult in the chair. Of course. They, you know, the airlines likes to break the chair. Uh, but I love it, I'm doing it. I'm out there, I'm living, you know? Yeah. God gave me another chance and I was on my deathbed and I'm here, I'm back, and I am the Pied Piper of dance. <laughs> yeah, you have, you've, you've struggled quite a lot over the years, both physically and I suppose mentally. Um, t tell us about that, and I suppose, what were the most difficult times for you? Well, you know, when you have this pain in the back of your neck and your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're speaking gibberish, and you go to six doctors within 10 days and you get, go home and take it easy, honey, you'll be fine. 
you know something's wrong. I think a woman knows when there's something wrong with mm -hmm. their body. They take care of their children, their husband, their own parents, not themselves. Mm -hmm. I knew something was wrong and I was screaming, reaching out for help and couldn't get it. And at what point did the help come? I mean, how far well, did you have to go? Well, I was put in for an MRI with uh, where they knock you out first. Yeah. And even knocked out, my arms and legs were flailing about, so they had to admit me. And within 17 hours, I was paralyzed from the neck down. Absolutely terrifying. And then uh, the emergency surgery, Dr. Human Melamed did it, and he went in blind, no MRI. And I remember hearing him say, I don't know whether to go in the front or the back, the front or the back. And then I heard him say, okay, we're going in or we're gonna lose her. Get the theater ready. And that's the first time I heard about an operating room being called a theater. Cause I'd never had surgery before. So I was like, what did that mean? You know, am I dying? It's all led though, because you, you're, you're some woman for one woman because you're still, you're still out about doing the goddamn thing as they I say am. in the industry. I am. And you've been teaching here in Dublin all week, but that all leads to tonight's event in UCD. Abby Lee spills the tea. What I tea I want to know. I love all of this. What's the idea behind the show? Tell us everything. Give well, me a little it's not snippet. iced tea. <laughs> I know. It's not iced tea here. <laughs> it's from steeping it. hot tea. Yes. Well, tonight I am being honored by the, let me get this right. Yeah. The uh, University College Dublin. Yes. It's the Musical Society, and I'm receiving an honorary lifetime patronage award. Wow. wow. Yes, that's wonderful, that's isn't quite it? quite nice to get, isn't it? Yes, very so because, nice. Because we're giving you that, you're going to tell us all the secrets and all the stories. That's right. I so love it. Immediately <laughs> followed by Abby Lee spills the tea. Yes. I leave, you know, nothing on the dance floor. Well, I leave it all on the dance floor. I'm <laughs> telling everybody everything. I kind of take the kids through a journey of how the show started, what was real, what was reality TV, and then I open it for questions from the floor. And you say you open it for questions from the floor. Questions we're not allowed to ask here today yes, or else yeah. we get in trouble. <laughs> but you do, say, you do say that you're kind of, you're happy to talk about everything, including your year in prison. Is that something that you're kind of comfortable to talk about in an open forum? Absolutely. You, it's just part of your journey. Yes, and I also shot a documentary. It's called Life Sentence. And I wanted to call it how lifetime ruined my life, but I didn't like that. So <laughs> it's uh, a life sentence and it talks about my, you know, indictment, all of that, and then prison and then the medical, uh, you know, yeah. side of things. torture that happened after that. Yes. Yeah, because when you were on last, we, were t we talked about your prison experience, which was absolutely mind blowing. I mean, when you look back at it now, what, what wonderful do you think? and horrific. I met some of the most amazing women that you'd ever want to meet. And then, you know, the guards and the medical staff was a little different story. Yeah. But I just want to tell everybody that there are tickets available for tonight, a few. A few, only I a... think it's almost sold out. Well, it's I'd say by the end of the They're probably gone, gone. Yes. They're probably gone yes. now. And you go to performfestival.com. While we're on the subject of everything Abby Lee Miller, could there be a Dance Moms revival in the mix? And would you be a part of it if the right deal came to mind? No, no, and no. Oh. Uh, there is a season nine in the works. Oh. Yes. Not a revival, but a season nine. A season nine, and... Continuing the journey. You'll be heavily involved? Yes. Okay. Not so heavily, I hope. <laughs> but, yes, I will be definitely involved. Definitely um, involved. I will own the show. What yes. else can we expect from Abilene Miller? The force that is. Well, we have the podcast happening in June. Leave it on the dance floor. Mm -hmm. We leave it all out there. And uh, season nine in the works. Brilliant. The documentary. Life There's sentence. so much coming up. And I have a scripted show that I'm pitching right now. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much, Abilene Miller. Lovely Thank to you. Good it's luck tonight. Great to be here again. Thank, Thank you. So